Hi there, it's Jeff here with another video. Let's look at the economics of mortgages as part of your study of financial economics. So what is a mortgage? Well, a mortgage is a type of loan used to buy, the, uh, buy a property, most commonly a home or a commercial property. Now, crucially, a mortgage is a secured loan. Now, that means the property itself, the house you buy, for example, serves as collateral if you fail to keep up or make your mortgage interest payments, the lender, could be a bank, could be a building society, or they could take it back and sell the property to help recoup their losses. Mortgages typically are long-term loans, perhaps repaid by the person who's taken out the loan over a period of 15, 20, 30 years or so. Now, crucially, the interest rate on a loan uh, can be either fixed or variable. We'll talk about that in a second or two. This is the total amount of mortgage lending in the UK. So we, we can see here there's you know, tens, hundreds of billions of pounds in mortgage lending each year. It fell quite sharply in the global financial crisis, then picked up again, dipped once more during the pandemic, but again rising in 2021-2022. So just under, or just over, sorry, £300 billion of mortgage lending per year in the UK. In terms of market share, well, you can see here that the, the biggest of this chart shows the 10 largest mortgage lenders, and they account for over 80% of the market. The top three, Lloyds, NatWest, Nationwide, well, they account for over 42% of the market. Uh, so this lending market, the mortgage loans market, is an oligopoly because the top five firms clearly have more than 60% of the total lending. Of that group, three are building societies. Now, we have a, a separate video on building societies owned by their savers. They are different in terms of ownership to commercial banks, such as, such as Santander, Barclays and Lloyds. So Lloyds is the biggest mortgage lender in the UK. Nationwide is Britain's biggest building society. OK, so fixed interest rate mortgages. A fixed rate offers an interest rate to the borrower that remains the same, it's fixed, for a specified length of time. It could be a two-year fix, a three, a five-year, even a ten-year fix. I've heard of people getting a twenty-year fix. It depends if the lenders are prepared to offer those in the market. But fixed rates provide much more predictable monthly interest payments that don't fluctuate with money market changes or, for example, interest rate changes announced by the Bank of England, our central bank. Not always, but typically uh, fixed rates have a higher initial interest rate than a variable rate. Uh, and as we'll see in a second, most mortgages sold in the UK have been fixed rate agreements. And here's the data from 2018 through to the end of 2022. And you can see that the majority, the vast majority of mortgages sold in the UK were at fixed rates. Although it could be different time dimensions, it could be two years, it could be three, it could be ten years. Now, a variable rate is an interest rate loan that changes based on money market conditions. So the interest rate and your monthly payments could go up, could go down. It's variable. And therefore, of course, that involves more uncertainty for the home buyer, the borrower. Uh, the Bank of England, for example, might raise their own interest rates and that might edge variable interest rates up in the mortgage market. And that means you have to pay more in monthly interest. There's something called SVR, Standard Variable Rate. Now, that is the mortgage interest rate a lender will usually move people onto once any introductory fixed interest rate deal has reached its conclusion. Here's the key data showing the cost of borrowing money in the housing market. These are the interest rates, uh, standard rates on two-year fixed, three-year fixed, five-year fixed, a ten-year fixed in red there, and in green, a two-year variable rate. <clears throat> Pardon me. Now you can see that interest rates tend to move in the same direction. They vary. Of course, as a home buyer, you're trying to get to trying to find the best deal in the market uh, relative to your situation and the extent to which you want to fix at a rate for a given length of time. But notice that from the end of 2021, 2021 onwards through 2022 into 23, there was a steep increase, a sharp increase in the cost of mortgages. They became much more expensive. That, of course, has a consequence for the housing market. 
because mortgage payers have to allocate more of their monthly income, their budget, to paying the interest on their home loan. By the end of twenty, by sorry, by the summer of twenty twenty three, uh, mortgage rates on average were well above four and a half, five, five percent, sometimes higher. Uh, to obtain a mortgage, typically. Uh, first-time home buyers in particular, they need to save a deposit. It's very unlikely that the lender will lend you enough, 100% of the purchase price of a house. They might lend you, for example, 80% of what the property will, co uh, will cost you, and you therefore have to find 20% in terms of a deposit. So <clears throat> typically, the higher the property value and the higher the loan amount, the higher the, the deposit you need. Now, in the UK in 2022, the average... Deposit needed for a first-time buyer was sixty-two, sixty-two and a half thousand pounds. That's a lot of money to find for a deposit. Of course, that's why the average age of first-time buyers is now above, well above thirty. But look in Greater London, the deposit amount was more than double, over a hundred and twenty thousand pounds needed to obtain a, 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 a to build up a deposit for a mortgage. Whereas in the northeast, it was around thirty thousand pounds. Now, the need to save for a deposit is a major barrier for people to enter the housing market. A big debate in economics, finally, is the relative cost of buying and renting. Of course, if you, if you can't afford to buy, you may well be forced into the rented sector. And for this chart shows the sort of monthly buying costs and the monthly rental costs, and it's a nice little contrast. And you can see for most of the past decade, um, buying a home in the UK has actually been more affordable than renting. If you look at the monthly costs only, that gap fluctuated. Um, but in uh, by 2022, you can see the cost of renting and buying going up. So just under a thousand pounds for buying, just over a thousand pounds for renting. And this, of course, is one of the big issues in the UK at the moment. It's very expensive and very difficult to get a mortgage to buy a house. And it's also very expensive to rent a property. Average rents going up in some cities, some towns. Finding affordable rented property is extremely difficult. And student rental properties have also become very, very expensive as well. So there we go. I hope you enjoyed this quick look at the economics of mortgages. Take care. See you sometime soon.